Welcome to the SEI Podcast Series, a production of the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. A transcript of today's podcast is posted on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts. Hi, and welcome to the SEI podcast series. My name is Katie Stewart, and I'm a senior engineer in the SEI CERT division. I'd like to welcome Andrew Hoover. Andrew leads the resilience engineering team within the software engineering CERT division at Carnegie Mellon University. Today, we're here to talk about some of the process maturity requirements in the cybersecurity maturity model certification, more commonly known as the CMMC. Our discussion today will focus on documenting practices. But first, we're gonna start off by telling our guests a little bit more about ourselves and our backgrounds, as well as what brought us here to the SCI. So again, I'm Katie Stewart. Um, I've been with the SCI for about seven years now. Uh, My work primarily focuses on risk and resilience management, as well as metric and measurement development. So, Andrew, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, Yeah, certainly. Thanks, Katie. Um, I've been at the SCI for eight years, uh, like Katie, primarily working on um, uh, risk and resilience in the Cyber Risk and Resilience Directorate. Uh, My background is in auditing and technical vulnerability assessments, um, and I've been able to continue that work while at the SCI. Great. Thank you, Andy. Uh, For members of our audience who might be new to the topic of CMMC, uh, we've done some introductory blog posts and some other webcasts um, that can provide you with a nice overview of the model. Um, And we'll include links to that in our transcripts. Um, So let's get to it. Uh, One of the requirements at level two of the CMMC model is the documentation of practices. Uh, so, Andy, can you tell us a little bit more about this process maturity requirement? Yeah, so it's uh, it's in level two, like you said, and it basically requires that all practices up to the level that you're being certified at be documented. Yeah, so that's a very important activity for organization. Um, can you talk about why it's so important? Yeah, sure. So an organization should build its cybersecurity practices by documenting them and then practicing them as documented, right? So in other words, say what you do, do what you say. And what this does, it enables an organization to execute them in a repeatable and consistent manner, but also to achieve the outcomes that they're expecting, which becomes the foundation for continuous improvement, which is why we built the maturity um, uh, component into the CMMC that so that organizations can continue to um, improve. Yeah, I mean, I think continuous improvement is critical for organizations when they're trying to build a cybersecurity program. You know, you put it in place and then you you iterate. Um, and the very first part of that is documenting your practices. Um, so, can you actually tell us what that might look like? What does it look like when you document a practice? Yeah, you know, the level of detail of the documentation uh, of the documented practices can and will vary from organization to organization. I mean, some organizations are going to likely have handwritten desk procedures and other organizations are going to have like formal SOPs or standard operating procedures. So it's really up to the organization to document them however they feel like it's going to work best for them. Right. So if I'm like a smaller company, maybe just five people, I can just have simple procedures defined? Yeah, you know, as long as the documented procedures um, define the practice and in such a way that the activities are repeatable, then that would work. Uh, We would expect the complexity of documentation to kind of grow as the organization grows. So the smaller organizations, like you said, you know, they're going to have kind of very basic documentation, whereas when you get to, you know, to, to larger multinational companies, you're likely going to have very formalized SOPs for everything that are regularly managed and updated mm-hmm. and used throughout a massive enterprise. Right. No, that makes sense. Um, so let's turn specifically to CMMC. Do I have to document all of my CMMC practices? Up to the level at which you're being assessed. Um, How you document them is going to vary 
Um, I assume some organizations will likely have an IT security policy, right? And maybe it'll document them there. Other organizations might look to document them in their SSP. And still other organizations may have very specific SOPs for the individual um, area you know, of the practice. It's really up to the organization. But you know, there's no process maturity at level one. So at level one, it's not required. But when you move up to level two, the model is cumulative. So not only do you have to document the level two practices, you also have to document the level one practices in order to be certified at level two or higher. Right. So what about organizing my practices? If, if I'm going for a CMMC assessment, do I have to organize my practices by the CMMC domains? No, that's a good question. You know, the, the organization of the documented practices doesn't matter. What does matter is that you should just do what is easiest to use. The most important component of a documented practice is that they're followed. And if the documentation is too complex or too difficult to find or too difficult to follow, it's not going to be followed. So it doesn't matter if you organize it based on the CMMC framework, which you can, uh, but you could also organize it in, in, a, in another way that works best for you. Like we said, maybe in an, in an SOP, uh, maybe in your SSP or, you know, any other way that, that you think you would get the most uh, value out of the documentation. Right. Just as long as the practices are followed, right? That's the most important. Exactly. So what about updating uh, practices? What are the requirements to update documented practices? Yeah, you know, there's not like a real defined requirement in the CMMC to update them. However, if the practice is being followed and the organization changes the way that that practice is implemented, then the documentation also should change with it, right? And the CMMC assessors should be looking to ensure that the practice is being followed, not just that it's being documented. You're not getting any value out of documenting something that you're not using. And so hopefully the CMMC assessors will be um, ensuring that not only is it documented, it's also being used you know, throughout the organization that it was intended to be used for. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just want to reiterate a point you made earlier um, that the documentation of practices is key to establishing continuous improvement. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'll add that in a previous podcast, we talked about establishing policy, which drives the establishment of the documented practices. And so I uh, would encourage our listeners to to go find that one and tune into that as well. You know, in later podcasts, we're going to talk about managing and measuring these activities for effectiveness, and then standardizing and optimizing uh, all of this documentation for your organization. Yeah, great. It'll be good to continue the discussion. Um, so let's close by uh, talking about the resources that are out there and where those can be accessed. Um, we've already mentioned a few, and once again, we'll include all the links to the resources um, in the transcript of this podcast. And this podcast, as well as the others that we've recorded, um, are available on the SCI website at sci.cmu.edu forward slash podcast. Uh, and anywhere that you get your podcasts, including iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Um, as always, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out to us on LinkedIn, or if you have specific questions, please just email us at info at sci.cmu.edu. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. This episode is available where you download podcasts, including SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. It is also available on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts and the SEI's YouTube channel. This copyrighted work is made available through the Software Engineering Institute, a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. For more information about the SEI and this work, please visit www.sei.cmu.edu. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you.